In this video, I started out with zero dollars in his truck and spent the last four years building the farm to where it is today, only to go broke. So now I have the challenge of starting over on a brand new farm with next to no money. Will I go broke or will I make it big? Stay tuned to find out. And if you guys want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and drop a like helps too. Anyway, let's go do some farming. Well, boys, this is another day, another dollar, and I have just spent $2,000 on uh, some new tools and little things for the farm here. And uh, spring has officially sprung. There's no more snow. It is actually warm enough to possibly get planting. I don't know. I got a lot of work to do before we can even get close to that. But things are finally starting to green up, and uh, it's looking promising. Now, there's one thing I was missing for the farm, and that was a pressure washer. And I did some looking around the farm, and I managed to find one in the back of a shed it does work the only thing is the hose is completely rotted out and needed replacing so i went and picked one up in town so we're going to replace that so we can actually wash equipment now i've got the case 2870 all tuned up ready to go minus getting it all greased up and we're going to be taking that and putting it on the cedars so we can actually get out in the field now if you look right now there's not a whole lot we can plant can't plant corn can't plant soybeans but we can plant oats and if we want any straw for this winter we're going to have to get some oats in the ground at least now we only have four fields and all of them are pretty big but the smallest one we have is the one right across the road here see this one and on the left pretty decent field it's got some size to it and i think it should work for the amount of oats we're gonna need but this field right here i'm hoping to get into soybeans because we're gonna need some cash and uh that's definitely gonna give us some okay so i just finished getting the case all up and going here next order of business is to get that uh cedar out of the shed and hopefully see if everything works on it i'm not too sure it's definitely going to need some work at the very least but uh my hope is we can be out in the field by the end of today that is if i can manage to get it out of here without hitting anything i think we're good though all right so i gotta fold down the uh wings of the cedar here because we gotta check every one of those little pipes go into all the rows now i didn't end up picking up five from the parts store because i knew there was at least going to be a few that needed to be replaced just wasn't sure how many I, I maybe should have checked beforehand but it is what it is the important thing is this main pipe here is good to go this is the most expensive pipe on here and it doesn't look like it's got any leaks so i spent the last couple hours getting all this good to go i think we're ready but there's still two very big things that we're missing and that is seed and fertilizer now originally at the last farm i used to just go get it in pallets and just transport it via flat deck trailer but this year is a little bit different with the bigger farm now we're covering a lot more acres and uh yeah the pallets are just not going to cut it anymore so we're actually going to have to use this big trailer right here and since it's got a divider in it half of it's going to be seed half of it's going to be fertilizer now lucky enough for me yesterday i uh checked over the mac found out there was a real nice mouse nest sitting in the uh air intake there so we had to get that cleaned out but other than that it was pretty much good to go so i'm gonna take a little trip down to the local co-op here and i don't imagine this is gonna be cheap Buying pallets on their own is like a thousand or two thousand bucks. So uh, filling up half a trailer load of that stuff. Yeah, it's going to be quite the uh, check I'm going to have to write to cover all this. Well, here we are. I guess we'll have to see how expensive this gets. First up is fertilizer. And OK, eight thousand four hundred dollars. Definitely not cheap. And then we got seed which was slightly cheaper at uh, $4,725. So if my math is correct for both the seed and the fertilizer, that's about 13,000. I, I could be wrong on that. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 13,000, just over 13,000. So it wasn't cheap, but definitely necessary. All right, finally back here. So the cedar is now all good to go. The only thing that's left is to get seed and fertilizer filled up here. So we're going to pull under here and we should be able to load it up pretty easily. Although I do have to fold up the wings first. My original plan was to get it in those bins right there. But I think that's what we're going to be doing a little bit later in the planting season since we're still pretty early here. Well, that took a fair bit of maneuvering, but I think we got it. I might have to back up a little bit. I thought we had it, but not quite. Just a little bit. There we go. All right. Tank, I think is full. Yep, that's pretty fast. Gonna move it over to the next one here, and it should be pretty close. Might just have to pull forward a little bit. Got it. And we'll load this one up too. This is gonna take a little bit, but it's still a lot easier than using dang pallets. All right, folding the auger up. And I think we're ready to go here. So this field that we're going to go do is definitely not going to take more than one tank for sure. I think it's actually going to take a lot less. We're definitely not going to have to fill up any extra. So I'm thinking the last of it is going to go in the bins there because the next time we're going to use it is going to be for beans. And that's still about a month and a half, two months out. We just got to go down the road like a tiny little bit. Oh, dang. It's like there's some mud here. I hope the rest of the field's not muddy. I know the snow didn't melt that long ago, but shouldn't be this muddy. And off we go. We are officially moving on the very 
very first field here and everything is already getting absolutely covered in mud looks like our old pressure washer that we found there is going to be put to work by the end of today so it does look like there's a decent amount of rocks in these fields maybe after harvest we'll get out here with a uh rock picker or something but i may need to buy a land roller that should hopefully take care of some of the rocks but if we don't want to destroy any of the crops here we're definitely going to have to uh get on that quick I know I'm driving in a neighbor's field here, but I don't really got a choice here at the moment. If it was seeded, I wouldn't be driving through it. Well, it doesn't look like we're breaking any land speed records here, but uh, we're moving. That's what's important. Now, normally I'd do some headlands here, but since this field is so dang small, not even worth it. It looks like the max we can cruise is about 12. Although these fields are pretty rough. The rocks sure don't help. Well, on the very last pass here, uh, we're definitely overlapping a little bit, but not much we can do about that. I guess some parts are just getting double seeded and fertilized here, but if we should be all right all right and there we go first field finished oh gotta toss the hazards on we got a few hundred feet to drive i did not expect this thing to get so dirty from just one small field but it is bad at any rate it's gonna need a wash but i think that's a later today project my current worry is this hay field here i talked to the original owner he said he can usually get two cuts on a good year if it's a really really good year sometimes he can knock out three now normally you can't cut a hay field this early in the year but since it wasn't cut last year for whatever reason he told me that i'd be good to cut it this early this year now i've never cut this early but uh if he says so i guess we're gonna have to give it a try now i've been told that the uh the hay bind isn't in the greatest of condition it's an old old one well it's it's not that old but older than me that's for sure i guess we're gonna have to replace some of the knives and i did grab some while i was in town so we should be able to do that my only worry is this baler this thing is really really old and uh i don't think it makes the big bales that i want so if i have the extra cash which i don't know if i will we might have to look at something else anyways i think i'm gonna use the case here since uh it is is the nicest tractor we have i think it's all cabbed in it's got a really nice air conditioning and heat system so we're just gonna go with this and apparently i can put duels on this thing so i might have to go buy some although this thing does need a wash too looks like everything around here does got the baler moved out of the way i'm thinking the case is a little overkill for what we're doing here but uh we'll make it work oh yeah definitely overkill and it looks like i have blocked my only entrance well time to move everything again okay that'll work okay everything here is getting a wash because i don't want to work on dirty equipment this thing got so dang filthy from plowing snow it's ridiculous there look at that it actually looks like we have some decent equipment here all right so with my limited tools my hope is i can get this fixed but uh i can't be too sure well it took me half the day but we're up and going i gotta test this thing out but before we do that i wanted to show you guys something cool here so the hydraulic power on this tractor is really really good but for these older hay binds here the only way to run them if they did not have a direct pto shaft is hydraulics and the only way to get that type of hydraulic power that's not right from the tractor onboard hydraulics is the pto so essentially that's one big old hydraulic pump which in turn spins this and runs the knives now with any luck the new knives on this thing should make it cut pretty dang good now i've never ran this particular model of haybine before so it's going to take a bit of getting used to but i'm hoping i got it down this first cut here is definitely going to be all over the place so with all the headlands finished which i had to do three of because of the close proximity to the fence we were now on to the back and forth which even with three headlands was still a little bit difficult because of the fence which eventually i got used to but it was still a learning curve so with the field now finished it was time to let it dry out for the next couple days so we could get it raked up and bailed however the tractor and haybine were yet again completely covered in mud so i had to get him clean so after shuffling around some more equipment yet again i hopped on the quad grabbed the auger and after realizing the auger would not go to the desired bin i had to abandon my plan to fill them with seed and fertilizer so one trip to the used equipment store and ten thousand dollars later i had a brand new auger that would work well brand new to me that is and after some careful maneuvering with the quad the auger was now in place and ready to go well that was a big pain in the butt however i think we should be ready to load some fertilizer in there that's the hope at least well it took an absolutely exorbitant amount of time but bin number one has a bunch of fertilizer in it bin number two has a bunch of seed in it we're good to go there this trailer is finally empty i'm not sure how long that's gonna last us i'm guessing we're gonna need another load or two of fertilizer and seed but it should help a little bit at any rate i'm gonna let all of this dry out so we can hopefully get it raked and bailed sooner than later i don't know we're not supposed to have any rain for a while so my hope is we'll be good to go but hope you all enjoyed subscribe and goodbye